FX Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in this video guys, we're going to take a look at some trades that we took down during the London session and also some during the US session. Um, we're going to break down some of these trades so you can know exactly what you're looking for when you use the FXN indicators on TradingView. So that way you're crystal clear on what to look for and essentially looking also at the bigger picture as well. But without further ado guys, let's go ahead and get this started. All right, guys, so the first pair we're going to look at is going to be EuroCAD. And what we're going to be looking at here on this EuroCAD is as you, we move into the London session here, you can see basically the Asian range is about nine and a half pips or so. So ideally, we want something to actually happen outside of this box because whenever you have a box that's this small or an Asian box that's this small, what's going to end up happening is, as you see here, a lot of the candles that come out are basically going to be either half or the entire size of the actual range so as we play this out here you'll see that we'll start to get some movement up and we're now going actually right above we're riding the 200 EMA now a very important part that you see is that we had a movement down right so this becomes essentially a first leg potentially that we can get and you can see now that we keep on moving back up. Now, the important factor to this is a couple things. Look at essentially where this high was created right here. And you see how when it came back up for the second leg, it actually was fine. It didn't violate that particular high and it stayed protected. So this right here essentially is a second leg. And also another thing to consider is look at where the EMAs are, the 5 and 13 that we look for as a confirmation for entry they're right there and they're together right so you're going to get a really good entry on this which is here so if we just play this out and this is the actual high of the day here our trade setup essentially if we're looking for at least let's say to go to yesterday's low should be about 25 pips or so all right, so we're essentially looking at right now potentially three, you know, almost four to one risk reward ratio, which is great. We're only risking seven pips. And so the reason that we put essentially the stop loss above this candle is because if this is not the high of the day, we want to be wrong right away and we want to be out of the trade right away, right? So there's no reason in going all the way up here and risking 15. Well, we can just find out and risk only seven, okay? So, as we play this out here, you can see, boom, essentially, we went to what? Yesterday's low. We pinned it, came back up, right? Now, obviously, we're outside of the, uh, of the London box right now, so... Look what happens basically, you know, during the opening of the U.S. session, you basically get a spike all the way back up. So by aiming for something that we basically previously had, like previous days low, we were able to basically avoid getting stopped out of the trade because if we would have went for, let's say, 30 pips or so, we may have not been able to hit take profit for the simple reason that... Um, for this to actually close automatically for you to on a take profit, you would need to have had the uh, the bid and ask also also pass 30 pips. And in this case, I don't think it would have done that. So by making it really simple and just going for 26 pips, we still had a way over three to one risk reward ratio, and we were able to get it on get in and out of the trade essentially within you know three candles, right? And so you can see we actually had a very nice, you know, clear setup of an M formation uh, type one setup here. And you can see between the first uh, and second leg, there is uh, two, four, six, seven, eight candles essentially between the first and second leg, which is a really good uh, setup. You can see the 
five and thirteen was right here, so we got in right away. Um, we didn't have to wait very long, and we hit our take profit. Okay, so that was the first trade. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one more trade. All right, so we are on pound JPY, and pound JPY essentially what we were looking for is you can see a twenty-five pip range of Asian range we have here. And essentially, we're going to see that there's a movement that goes up here for essentially another type 1 setup, right? Now, here's the main difference between the previous setup of EuroCAD and then this one of Pound JPY is that we really don't get any kind of, a, let's say, a second leg here. You know, we just basically have movement that just goes straight up and then comes right back down. Now, the crossover, by the time it happened, we were all the way down here, right? So by the time you take the trade, essentially, you're almost in the middle of the range. So if you ever take any kind of trades like this where you think it's either type 1 M formation or type 2 M formation, um, and you have to take it in real late because you're waiting for that confirmation, you have to make yourself aware that if you do take that trade, there's always a possibility actually that turns into a type three setup if it gets stopped out or, or stops in the middle of the range. So keeping that in mind, as we play this out here, you can see that essentially it keeps getting rejected anytime it goes anywhere near the middle of the range. So now we're starting to get into the New York session and essentially what is it that we're looking for now is if we're not at the perceived low of the day, we're not at the perceived high of the day at the opening of the New York session. So there's a very strong likelihood that this is just going to end up being a continuation trade. Okay. A continuation trade basically just is, looks like this, right? That's all it is. And it's just basically a continuation of what happened during London. Well, during London, all we basically had was a strong push uh, up. In this case right so now essentially be looking for a buy setup all right guys so as we take a look at the possibilities of how we can get into this continuation trade on pound jpy a couple things come to mind okay number one is um to get into a continuation trade you want something to have to work off of right so what i mean by that like if you look at this right here we're basically getting stuck at the top of the range, right? And we're also basically creating a W pattern to go up and continue. Now, you may not always get the W pattern actually like this. Sometimes, a lot of times, you'll just get something like this, right? But you want something to kind of help you confirm what you're seeing. So because you're at the perceived, you're not at the perceived high or you're not at the perceived low of the day, you're in the middle, basically. You're I'm looking for a continuation trade because a lot of times that's what typically happens um, based on the back testing that I've done with these pairs. So how do we get into this trade, right? We basically want to make sure we get a bounce off of this high the, of the top of the range here because that's really the main thing that we have to go off of right this second, uh, right now, because this is acting like basically a form of uh, support right now. Right. So essentially, if we can just take this trade over to the 200, we can at least potentially get easily 30, well over 30 pips. And we can have essentially, let's say, a uh, stop loss of 10 pips or under. So the risk reward ratio is definitely there. We have all the signs, not to mention that if you look at the previous entire week, if you look up the whole week, we've been in a trending cycle, right? So we've been moving down for quite some time, ever since the big election vote happened, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five days almost of straight down movement, okay? So there's a very good chance that market makers would want to start, you know, taking some profits off the table as well. So this would be... It would just make sense for them to want to go up higher and make this a continuation trade. Well, as we start to look into to this here, you can see that we kind of stalled here at the very uh, high of what we perceived at the time, the high of the day. So a lot of people could have been confused, actually, 
by thinking that this was going to be a big M formation here and it just basically be consolidating. Okay. And that's something very much well that a lot of people could have thought. But if you've done a lot of backtesting on these pairs, you'll know that the majority of the time you're looking for continuation trades. So as we play this out, you'll see that price actually comes back like an M formation and it might have trapped a lot of people. But ultimately, we went ahead and we got our 40 pips from this particular trade. All right. So this was literally just two trades out of the day that I think were very easy setups to see. And as long as you're understanding what's going on, guys, you can pick out these trades like this out of all the different pairs and make trading a lot easier for you because you're looking for very specific things to happen. And if those things aren't happening, then you shouldn't be taking the trade. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot from it. If you like watching these videos, guys, please comment below. Let me know so I can continue making these videos. And guys, thank you so much. You have a great day.